I'm Andrea Perry, Senior Broadcast Journalism major. Recently, I had the opportunity to interview the OSU A&M Board of Regents Chair, Andy Lester. One of the most interesting things I learned during the interview is that Andy Lester was a part of the search committee to hire our new president, Dr. Kent Smith. Here is my interview. Hello, Andy Lester, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well, it's great to be here today. Very good. How are you? I'm great. Well, it was nice meeting you. Um, so glad that you're here at our school, Langston University. Uh, what do you think about our new president, Dr. Kent Smith, and his you know, new appointment and his goals for our university? Well, I'm thrilled to have Dr. Smith here. Um, I was the chairman of the, uh, of the Presidential Search Committee, and oh, okay. we spent an, a lot of time uh, looking through lots of different candidates. So we had, I'll tell you, our search was, was really, a, a, I think, an impressive search. We, we hired a national search firm. Mm -hmm. We ended up with, I believe, around 60 applications, oh, and <laughs> most of these applications uh, were excellent. Uh, and almost any of whom would have made, I think, a great president. We narrowed that down to probably uh, about, oh, 15 or so, and then actually winnowed that field down to, I think we ended up interviewing uh, seven different candidates. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Presidential Search Committee recommended, I believe it was three, to the uh, Board of Regents for, uh, for further uh, review, and then the Board interviewed three and we ended up with Dr. Smith. Uh, we're thrilled with Dr. Smith. I'll tell you his background uh, was so impressive. Uh, this man has accomplished so much in such a relatively short time and, and uh, uh, we're thrilled to have him. Wow, you got me thrilled to have him as a president. I'm well, glad, good. you know, since out of 60 applicants, you know, he came on top. So that's well, and these great. were, I could say, from all <laughs> over the country. Um, we had a few from here in Oklahoma, but uh, had quite a few from uh, the vast majority were from, mm -hmm. from out of state uh, and all with really impressive backgrounds. That's what's up. That's so good. But we got the best. Well, what qualities and criteria uh, do you look for in the Board of Regents in selecting a new university president? Well, first off, it depends on, on the university. We want somebody who is going to match the, the, the character of that university, that institution. Our, our board, as you know, governs five different institutions. Um, <clears throat> and uh, looking for a, a president for Langston University is going to be a little bit different than looking for a president for, say, Panhandle State or Oklahoma mm -hmm. State University. Uh, all of them, in, in each of the cases, we're going to want uh, somebody with not simply excellent credentials, that's a mm -hmm. given, but uh, somebody who's got a proven uh, uh, track record leadership, uh, but we want somebody who's going to be the right person for that institution, who's going to fit the ethos of that institution and be able to lead that institution. Um, and uh, in this particular case, uh, Dr. Smith just rose to the top uh, so quickly. Now, and that's not to say that we didn't mm -hmm. have some great other candidates. Right. We did, um, and several of them, I think, would have made fine presidents here. But. Um, but in this particular case, given Dr. Smith's, uh, his background, his leadership background, his, his writing, his, uh, frankly, charismatic personality, his ability to go meet just about anybody at any level and put that person at, uh, at ease, mm -hmm. um, so many different things about Dr. Smith just came out very, very quickly. Sounds good. Well, um, I know that the Oklahoma Board of Regents prescribes academic standards for the universities. Um, how can, you know, how does Langston stand apart from the other universities? And also, how can we, you know, how can we achieve those standards? Well, first place, each institution has its own, uh, its own emphasis. Mm -hmm. Langston University, in my judgment, is a special place here in Oklahoma. Uh, it is uh, the westernmost of, of the historically black colleges and universities mm -hmm. in the country. And as such, it is not simply uh, Oklahoma's only HBCU, 
but uh, it's, it's an HBCU, frankly, for the entire western part of the United States. And uh, that puts, uh, puts uh, uh, Langston and its mission in a, in a special place. Uh, I think Langston has so many wonderful assets, uh, and I also think Langston has uh, many places that uh, I trust Dr. Smith's going to lead us to, uh, to even uh, doing better. Um, uh, and, and some of that he's already implemented mm -hmm. in the short time that he's been here, and, and uh, I suspect we're going to see a lot of uh, changes that I think are going to be great for uh, Langston University and its students. Um, well, according to the Office of Retention here at LU, our retention rate is about at 46%. Uh, is there any advice uh, for the university that you can give to us for us to raise that percentage? Well, uh, here again, I, uh, retention rate is one of numerous factors that I mm -hmm. think, uh, whether it's our Board of Regents or uh, other leaders of higher education in Oklahoma or, and the country are going to look at. Retention's important. Uh, when we bring a student here to Langston uh, as a freshman, we want that student to be a sophomore and a junior yeah. and <laughs> senior and ultimately to graduate. We're making an investment in that student just as the student's making an investment uh, in himself or herself and in the institution. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we'd like it to be 100%. We'd like to right. have all of our, our uh, incoming freshmen leave in four, five, or six years with a degree. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, uh, probably achieving 100% is, is uh, simply not going to happen. Uh, there are all sorts of reasons that, uh, that students uh, might have to leave or leave early or might have to leave for a while and then come back later. Um, that is something that I think we'd all like to improve upon. Um, I do believe that the, uh, that the Chancellor of Higher Education has an initiative right now looking at student retention uh, and uh, that there could be, uh, as a result of that, uh, some change to funding formulas uh, based on student retention. Uh, so it's something that, that I, I'd like to see us improve on. Um, I, I wouldn't want to put too much of an emphasis on, on that one factor as opposed to, to, to many others. Part of what I think Langston does and what Langston stands for is giving opportunities uh, to students uh, to come to a place that they're going to feel comfortable, that may not feel comfortable at some of the other institutions that we have here in Oklahoma. And, um, and uh, student retention sometimes uh, may be lower here than it is mm -hmm. at other institutions. Of course, it's not the lowest here by any means uh, either. Okay. It's not the lowest in the state of Oklahoma? Uh, not to my understanding. Okay, well that's great. And <laughs> that's I, my understanding great. is we're, we're uh, pretty typical for uh, HBCUs around the country mm -hmm. here, a little bit above average. Okay, well that's great. Yes. Um, so, I mean, does, how does the retention rate relate to funding, or does it at all? Well, the, the part of this initiative, as I understand it from uh, the Chancellor of Higher Education, there would be some relationship between uh, uh, retention and funding. Uh, I don't know what that will end up being. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure there is a, a, a single proposal yet for how that would be. Um, here again, there's one obvious way that it relates to the extent that we receive money from the state per student. If the student we don't retain, the money follows mm -hmm. that student to some other place. So uh, there, there is at least that relationship right there. So the more students we can retain, the more of our, whether it's our state funding and obviously the tuition money as well, right. uh, we'll, we'll stay right here. Sounds good. Well, we better, you know, retain those students. That would be good. <laughs> that would be that would good. Be good. Um, okay, so I know uh, you will be the chair on the Board of Regents uh, for the next year, right? Yes. So what do you plan to do in this year? Well, uh, our, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about our Board of okay. Regents. I'm, I'm really pretty proud of our board. We have a, a nine-member board. Uh, one of the things that I didn't really know about our board before I became a member of it uh, is how hard each of the members of our board works, and each one does. Uh, each person on the board cares about the five institutions that we govern and uh, generally takes uh, uh, some area of interest to that member uh, as 
kind of a, a special emphasis. And here's what I mean by that. We have a couple of members of our board, uh, one of whom is in the public construction business and another uh, who is in the real estate development business. Mm -hmm. And these two individuals uh, spend a lot of time, frankly, saving our institutions a lot of money when we're uh, dealing with construction projects. They know a lot about that. Um, I'm a lawyer. We have one other member of the board who's a lawyer, and the two of us might emphasize a little bit more of the legal aspects. And of course, we do have our board counsel as well. But uh, we'll, we'll take a look at some things that maybe some of the other board members don't don't look uh, don't look at so closely. Um, and so each one contributes a lot and, uh, and and works pretty hard. And when I say pretty hard, this is a volunteer position. Mm -hmm. Nobody's being paid for for, for this and. Each board member probably puts in on average between 15 and 20 hours a week or more uh, for, <laughs> for our institutions. Right. And, and so they really do care deeply. Uh, I tell you all that, your question was about uh, goals as, as board chair. Uh, truthfully, being the board chair is, is largely symbolic. Um, I'm one of nine members. I have one vote, uh, so I, I, I can only... Uh, I need to get at least four other, other members to, to agree with me to, to, to do something. Uh, but uh, we're, we're, we're a collegial board. We get along with each other very well. We do have some things we might disagree on, but, uh, but ultimately, after we take the vote, then we go implement the policy. Okay, so after the year is up, uh, will you just go back to your former position, just a board member, or? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'll still be a board <laughs> member. I was appointed in, uh, uh, to fill an unexpired term in 2007 and then reappointed to a full term uh, in 2010. So uh, it's a, an eight-year term. So I'm on this board until <laughs> April 4 of 2018, unless, unless something strange happens. Sounds good. Well, it was very great, you know, talking to you and finding out about the Board of Regents and, you know, how you see the future of our institution and nice meeting you and it's very nice Thanks to so meet much. you thank you see more interviews like this one and other student produced productions on the Langston University website at the Student Success Center and on channel 97